I want to talk about this album, Chemistry, because I've been listening to it. I listened to it last night, and my daughter is such a massive fan of yours, and she's 19. So I said, they gave me this sneak listen to I'm Kelly so Clarkson's new like album. This, yeah. And so she got in the car with me, and we drove around and listened to the whole album. And yeah. she, both of us, blown away, but my daughter just going on and on about your range and the way you put a song across. And I think this is your 10th, is this your 10th album? It's my 10th, someone told me that, yeah. That's amazing, and yeah. I what someone I, told me that. I, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I had no I'm idea. told I'm delightful. I am delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Not by anyone here. <laughs> I hire a guy. <laughs> um, but it, it what, what's amazing to me is I I don't I know I think I I feel like I know great singing when I hear it, and I remembered watching your audition tape, which is out there. It's fascinating to see your audition for American Idol. Yeah, and it's uh, fascinating to know which one you saw. Which, what do you mean? Because they they show, you know, they edit and they show you, I think they ended up releasing, but they had me actually sing another song. I came in singing at last. Yeah, that's the one I saw. Yeah, but then they actually ended up releasing at some point because people, they found out, I because they asked me, they're like, oh, that's how you sound a slow song. Can you sing like an up tempo? And like literally every person was singing Itchy, kitschy, ya ya, whatever. The 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 pink, the lady marmalade, lady yeah. marmalade. Every soul in the building was rehearsing that song to sing. So I was like, anything but that song. I was like, so I ended up singing Madonna, Express Yourself, for some odd reason, because that's not like a. But it clearly went well. Way. It went fine, but like I just—it's funny because how they edit the show, like nobody even saw that for you. Well, what's great is watching their reactions because it's you know you have the the judges there and it's Paula Abdul and yeah. Cal, and they're just they're you start they're like okay go ahead and yeah. you come in and you really do look like you've just come in from selling some Red Bull to yes. people in a park. I literally probably <laughs> and did. then you start to sing at last and you just cut to them and it's really fun to see because it's. I don't know. It's 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 like people seeing a UFO. They're just all looking at you. Their reactions are so priceless. They're seeing awesome talent so, come out of you, which is really cool. Well, so Randy and Paula were like that with me, but I had to win over the Brit. Like he he didn't even <laughs> remember me. He like I like I came back and he literally said and like I think I was singing Respect and it was on one of the lives or something and I, and he I, I was like oh you can't hear that enough. Um, he was like I don't even remember you and I was like. Thank you. That is so great. Well, it's funny. Um, His job was kind of to be that way. And, and, no, and it's I, nice. because I had you... also changed my hair color. Though. So I think he just honestly did not recognize me or remember <laughs> me at all. Was not impressed by my voice at first. And and I what? think I... No, what do you mean? Wasn't. What are you talking about? You're, you have, I think I won you him have over. like this crazy operatic voice. What do I'm you mean? telling you. I, I But I literally I got off stage and I was like, well, you can't hear that enough. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember you. I was like, okay. Yeah, I'd rather suck and be memorable than un, but not memorable. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wears sweaters with no T-shirt underneath, and that. <laughs> no, yeah. he's like such a fan now. He's so nice. Oh, I now just, he's come around. I had to oh, win that's, him yeah, over. Sure, no, now I he's won him over around. on the show. I won him over on the show, but I, it, I think it took a minute. Yeah. This uh, album that you've done, Chemistry, is yeah. about really personal stuff in your life. Yeah. Which is where a lot of great music comes from. Tragedy. Historically, but uh, must be, I know that you wrote some of these songs maybe a year and a half ago. Two and a half to three. I, I literally had to sit on it because my my label loved the uh, the, the work, but it, I was like, I can't, I can't sit and do this. I'm not ready. Like, you know what I'm saying? To talk about it. Like, so yeah. I, and now I just needed to wait until, um, you know, we were through it and and then I could do it. But, so it's weird to listen to now. Do, it's do you like feel different... like it's all because you went through this traumatic, you know, separation, divorce? Is mm -hmm. that is and, I, and obviously I'm not a songwriter, or know anything about it, but is that at all therapeutic to write about it? It's only therapeutic. That that's the 100 percent the reason why I I did it. Like I wrote so many songs, and I think um, you know we all process things differently. And for me, like even when I was a kid, I had a <laughs> Funny enough, I had a problem communicating and really good at it now. <laughs> but um, but I had a problem with it and my mom like shoved a like a journal in front of me and was like, why don't you write? And so I started writing poetry and I and I, I noticed that I that's how I would process my feelings or what I was feeling or I just didn't know sometimes because there's so many, it just feels chaotic sometimes up here. So um, so then it turned into music. And so a lot of that was just me doing it selfishly. But um, then you realize like, a lot of people, unfortunately, will relate to, the, I mean, statistically, a shit ton of us relate <laughs> to a divorce rate. So, um, you know, and just loss in general, grief in general. So um, I picked the ones that I felt weren't so um, literal, 
mm-hmm. and and okay because we have children. So I, I picked the ones that were okay that I felt like, and then um, I put those out. But now, but the ones that, that are I, super literal. Those are for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they're probably just super specific. And so super it, duper specific. Right. On yeah. August fifth. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of anger. <laughs> I think a couple of the angry songs made it, but they weren't the ones that were like, uh, you know, no, code red over. It. Yeah, go go somewhere else. Yeah, well it it it's uh it, it's fascinating to me because what I know is um trying to make people laugh and what's always been an amazing realization for me at the times when I've been really upset about something, maybe show didn't go well or something didn't go my way. And I'll start being, talking about it and doing like a comedic riff about it. And then I'll notice that people around me are like laughing really hard. And you've been around this because you've been with me a long time, Sona. Yeah. That sometimes when I'm just venting about something that went wrong and I keep venting about it and people are laughing, I feel like, wait a minute, I just took this negative experience and I wasn't even trying to, but somehow it just turned into a way of everybody's laughing now, so some good came out of it. Absolutely. And And I imagine it's somewhat similar to, I mean, very different, but somewhat, some of the same same idea. I think it's exact. And it's, and and I think it's, um, you know, I've said this before, but like, especially like divorce in general is hard, separation, grief, loss, all of that is hard. Um, I think the worst part, though, is when you feel alone. Like, I I don't even hang out with anybody that's really, like, my main group of friends, like, aren't married, don't have children, aren't in the public eye. Like, none of the things that tick the boxes that I am. So, which is awesome. That's why we make a a fun group. But, But at the same time, when you're going through something so horrendous and so publicly, there's, there's no way to, like, describe that like mm-hmm. there's i just saw your shirt i'm sorry that's amazing um <laughs> i caught my eye <laughs> that's amazing um but i can get no you way. one it's a, thank you it's a conan um, shirt and uh they're very I sexy love it. it's yeah. amazing very yeah. sexy. um i'm so adhd <laughs> like squirrel sorry um but i think i think when you're <laughs> when you're when you're that when you're that isolated and i think mm-hmm. everybody really covid right and people yeah. are so isolated like i think that's the worst to not feel like you can connect with with another being and like heal in that sense and i think that that that's why we all do crave like maybe it's not marriage or maybe it's not whatever society tells you but we do crave companionship and and because you need you need to connect and you need to it's it's almost a a process of healing i think for me do what do you do you have an instrument that you use a musical instrument when you when you are trying to work something out do you use I a guitar a or use a piano I'm a horrible guitarist uh-huh. and I like literally I played one tour and then I found out like halfway through they were like not putting it in there. <laughs> I was like I was like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and they, I found out they were like not putting it in the mix and they were like well we just knew you know you're learning so like and I was like oh my god I killed that solo I was yeah, like no one I heard was it. rocking yeah. on low tonight I was like I felt it and I was like okay I'm gonna let the professionals do it so I know chords like on a, enough to like write if I need to on a, a guitar or piano but honestly most things um, especially this record um, most of it was acapella just lyrics and melody flowing out of me and then we worked a, a track around it um um, and sometimes I call like I I literally sent out like a like a code red like any any artist friends that I knew that were producers or writers I was like please send me anything you have that's like even if it's like a random guitar riff idea or just anything that because I I was needing to get all of this out and I just needed different moods and different like mm-hmm. perspectives musically so um so I wrote like that too but it's j- the lyrics and melody or me I love that you worked with and I I did not see this coming but one of my all time <gasps> All time idols uh, is Steve Martin. Steve Martin. I've just, I absolutely adore Steve Martin. I can't he believe it, he said yes. And he had a huge impact on my comedy and my life. And then I find out that, I mean, I always knew he's an amazing, amazing uh, banjo player. Yeah. And um, I hear about this collaboration yeah. that you did uh, with Steve Martin, which. You would have I, never, th- I. What? Like yeah. that doesn't even make sense. But it sense. sounds great. Yeah. And the song is So the song is I Hate Love and and 
in the song. So I wrote, I, I <laughs> sure. Um, I didn't on these days. It was a really sunny day. Um, um, no, and why I hate love is not that I hate love. It's it's that you hate what love can do. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and especially so in the second verse, Um, you know, you watch The Notebook, right? And you're like, oh, that's so beautiful. James Garner crying. Like all the things you're like, I could, this is achievable. And then you see reality in like a movie, like it's complicated with like Meryl Streep, yep. Steve Martin, Alec Baldwin. It's one of my favorite movies. And um, that's more real life. Life. And so I just thought it was funny to play off of those. I'm very much inspired by art, like whether it's music or movies or art or whatever. And um, so I I played off that. And then the lyric, it's like, I'll take Steve Martin over Gosling. Like I'm bas- basically like throwing Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I love Ryan Gosling. <laughs> but I, I was making I dated a him for a while. Okay. And it's, it's, was it good for you? Or? No, okay. it's really. Okay. Yeah. I know it's not no. the notebook, is it? Underwhelming um, lover. Um, <laughs> So, no, so anyway, I made this reference of Steve Martin in it and that I I would choose Steve Martin um, over Gosling. And and um, I literally looked at Jesse Shack and my producer. I was like, do you think, because I know he's a badass musician. I was like, do you think in some world he would agree to play on this? Because it's kind of a pop punk song. And, yeah. and banjo, I thought, would be cool on it. And yeah, so, and it is. And it Great. is. And so anyway, he said yes. I know. And That's I great. didn't get to go to the studio with him. I'm so, I still never met him. Jesse got to. I was working. It's so funny. You brought up the notebook and I just have to relate that I sh- uh, Ryan Reynolds was on the show. Do you remember this? Ryan Reynolds was on the show it's once. It's burned into my memory okay, forever. So, so yeah. Ryan Reynolds wait. was on our show and he had this idea. He said, let's recreate this scene from the notebook. So I'm wearing the blue dress. <laughs> In the rain, yeah. When and, with the they're yelling at each other, and they're yelling at each other in the rain. Yeah. You came back for me, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is doing Ryan Gosling, and it it culminates with the two of us, and it was shot in this like beautiful filmic style to exactly match the movie. Oh my gosh! And I am you're Rachel McAdams. I'm, I'm Rachel McAdams, yeah. and my hair is just matted down, and I'm wearing the same dress. How was like, your ugly cry? Oh, it was fantastic. It <laughs> yeah. was really ugly, yeah. and um, nailed it. But but it ends with. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and I had just agreed that we were going to rush each other and start making out. So we do. We start making out and we're making out for what? It felt like four hours. Yeah. But it was maybe just and like it's, a, you can, a minute. You can see it on the internet. Long. But Ryan. Give it the old college no, try. No, no. I just huh? go <laughs> for it. And Ryan Reynolds at one point has this move where he's reaching over and he's doing. The, he's kind of twiddling my ear. Oh, yeah. God. And so we just That's both one of went, his moves. Yeah, okay. exactly. So okay. uh, so um, I learned a lot about him. Uh, <laughs> and, and myself. Yeah, that exactly. Day. <laughs> and so we done, cut, we got it. And I'm just like, all right, what's next? And I move on. And um, my wife had watched the whole thing happen. <laughs> she saw it on TV that night. She watched it and she said, yeah, that ruined both of you for me. Uh, <laughs> like collectively at the same time. I no longer like... I, I'm no longer, I don't like you. Not, I don't I'm like- I'm unattracted to both I like, of you. Yeah, I now find you both horrific. <laughs> yeah. But- uh, I think that's amazing. Well, it's a, it's a good experience. It's yeah. amazing yeah. how long it lasted. Oh, oh yeah. So All right. long. Yeah, I, you know, just, All right. just go for it. You know, you just got When you know that's coming, do you use a mint? Do you put a mint in your mouth or? I actually, just to get them, had a burrito. <laughs> I had a very like garlic? A rare garlic burrito, <laughs> all garlic. Yeah. Because what did I care? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys still talk at all? Um, Do you yeah. still kiss? We, we, you... <laughs> let's just say yeah. we text a lot. Oh. 